So I recently started this little mini-series looking at how to go about doing Prot Warrior Reflect Damage Farming, and we said in that video that we would start with the lowest level of the dungeons that I would ever recommend, which was Scarlet Monastery, and move our way up, meaning that in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at Zulfa Rack. Now one thing that is going to be different about this video is the structure of the video itself, because normally we talk about the prerequisites and things and then talk about the pull and how you go about doing it. But given that the latter of those two is actually incredibly simple, we're going to go about talking about that first. This is because in order to achieve this pull, realistically all you're going to want to do is go to Sulfurac, make your way through the dungeon without pulling any mobs, although if you do, by the time you get to the graveyard section, which is where we're actually going to be doing any of the killing, most of the mobs will have reset and there are numerous reset points throughout the way if for any reason you don't reset the mobs. You can also drag mobs here and simply kill them along with everything else, however the only reason I don't elect to do this is because if you get any witch doctors in the pull, then they can heal the mobs. They only heal the themselves and other mobs that are of the novel type, they will not heal any of the zombies. However, it can still be incredibly frustrating. If you get to the graveyard and you do not have any additional mobs, all you're going to want to do is make your way around all of the graves, trying to keep all of the mobs in front of you so you're able to block the incoming attacks, open all of the graves and then proceed into the boss room for the Witch Doctor. Then you're going to want to target the Witch Doctor, get your back to a wall and simply cleave all of the mobs down with, well, cleave. This is as complicated as this pull gets, it's really as simple as that, so let's move on to some of the pros and cons of doing this and what you're going to need in order to be able to do this farm successfully. Now, one of the big selling points of this farm is going to be the fact that it is a relatively low level farm comparative to a lot of others that you will see, with the mobs being in the mid-level 40s. This means that when you are gearing and aiming for avoidance, you don't actually have to get as high as you might for some other farms. In the video you're watching, the gear that I've elected to use is about 75% avoidance, and at that point, I simply do not take hits. You will be able to achieve this level of gear fairly simply, and the benefit is that once you have, you can actually consider swapping out a few pieces for increased damage potential to get these pulls done a little bit quicker. This is something that you may or may not want to do given that these pulls are already quite quick so you can make your own mind up on whether that is worth your time or not. The only big limitation to the Zulfurak farm in terms of accessibility is quite literally its accessibility. Zulfurak is extremely out of the way. What I would recommend is that if you are an engineer and you have access to the ultra safe transporter trinket to take you to Gadget Zen, then that is going to be the way forward. I use this trinket regularly, it only has a 4 hour cooldown and from there you're able to go in and farm Zulfurak as much as you would like. Generally speaking, I only ever manage to do 3 runs before needing to go to town to vendor. If you're more willing to destroy some of the trash that you'll be getting, you'll probably be able to get a full 5 runs in, providing you have a sufficient amount of shields, as I tend to go through about 60-70% to of a shield's durability per pull. The pulls themselves are actually incredibly quick to cleave down all of the mobs and from there all you're going to want to do is loot, mount up, run out of the dungeon and reset. Now if you do need to vendor or repair, Gadget Zen is a very short walk away and even if you were to be doing this each and every single run, chances are you're still going to be hitting lockout doing this farm so do bear that in mind when you're trying to optimise. The last thing that I've sort of alluded to but I will think deserves an explicit mention is that because of these mobs being such a low level, you are able to optimise your gear a little bit more than just simply avoidance in the sense that you can try and tailor it to drop some of your avoidance that isn't in the form of block in order to increase the amount of block value that you have so that you'll block more frequently, maintain higher stacks of your debuff from your Sporagar shield and then be able to keep a higher damage rate going out onto the mobs. This is perhaps going to improve your DPS dramatically while farming comparative to even just improving it via higher damage statistics. You will not benefit as much from increased critical strike chance as you would from increased block. Now finally, the last thing to talk about is going to be how you're going to go about making your gold from this farm. 
Now, you are going to make an incredibly large amount of gold simply from vendoring the grey items that drop as well as the raw currency. But the biggest amount of gold that you're going to make here is in mage weave cloth. This is the main reason I actually love this farm and it's the one that I am doing regularly at the minute. Because not only is it much easier than any other of the realistically good gold farms that you can do as a warrior. But also mage weave cloth isn't actually present in an awful lot of the gold farms that people do at least at the time of recording. Because they all do ones at a higher level that get rune cloth. This means that on my realm, when I started doing this farm, it was 40 silver a cloth for the mage wreath cloth. Meaning that each run was getting me 20 to 25 gold a time just from the cloth alone, which is absolutely fantastic when you consider that the runs are only about 5 minutes long. From there, you are also going to have access to an awful lot of green items that you can either vendor for decent amounts or once again, as per usual, you'll be able to disenchant them to get an increased value. The final thing that's worth mentioning is that there are actually a decent amount of purple items that you can get in here, as well as some BOE blues. And I was actually fortunate enough to get a Nightblade in my second ever run without actually even realizing because I can be foolish like that. Now, when it comes to gold per hour, you know that I really don't like to give any sort of numbers because they are so incredibly variable depending on how you're going to go about doing the farm, your success levels and a bit of luck, as well as server prices which fluctuate dramatically. I have on screen at times in this video got open a loot window so you can see what it is that I'm getting, although the values themselves are wildly out, so do not consider that to be the be all and end all in terms of the amount of gold that you'll make by performing this farm. In my personal experience, I am achieving roughly 150 to 200 gold an hour, although that is substantially lower from time to time and obviously substantially higher like on the time when I got that Nightblade. That's going to about wrap it up for this video though guys, I do hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did please do let me know in the comment section below or similarly if you have any questions that I haven't already covered in this video then let me know that too. But for now, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Later.